Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Phyllis Ellis. I'm the president of Rocky Larry Branch and ACP. It is our pleasure to host this event for you today. We think it's very important to have the community come out and the voters to see the candidates all in the same place, on the same stage, you know, so you can see them side by side. Uh, we have candidates running for school committee, ward counselors, council at large, and candidates for mayor. We are going to go by um, school committee first, the ward counselors, council at large, and then the candidates for mayor. The only difference from this event and the last event is that we will be asking questions after the last introduction of the candidate. The candidates have not seen these questions. We want to know how they actually think on their feet, okay? First, we're going to start with the school committee. Leona Martin here is the chair of our education committee. So she's going to introduce the candidates and ask them all the important questions. Leona. Thank you, President. So good afternoon, everyone. mentioned. So we will start with, oh, we've got rules. You get three minutes to say what you're going to say, and then we'll be asked the questions, the question, you'll get two minutes. And there is, I believe, a timekeeper. So we don't want to have to cut you off, but if we have to, we will. <laughs> okay, so why don't we get started with Kathleen. Thank you for your time. 
Thank you for your vote, and I wish you all luck. Thank you, Kathy. And the sacrifices I have been through. 
I have worked my butt off to be here today and be able to sit right next to you. I see him turning red, shaking his head, and as he moves to the, towards the microphone, he awkwardly begins to say, I, I did not mean it in that way. I become uncomfortable with my boldness and his white fragility that I quickly remind myself, Cynthia, don't you dare say another word and apologize. The message was loud and clear. As a dog of an immigrant in Latin American growing up in urban districts, rarely did I get the privilege to be taught by educators that looked or sounded like myself. Equity, diversity, and inclusion is a topic that fascinates me because it forces me and others to better understand our existence and unconscious biases. As a school committee member, I have hope to continue to engage in the conversation of how to best recruit, hire, cultivate, welcome, and support all educators especially those of color, but most importantly, how we can best write and support policies that will help us hire and retain more educators of color in different positions. This will allow our students to see themselves in these positions, to be able to know that they belong, are in a safe place, and that we are moving our district to a more inclusive and equitable one that can and will influence other districts. I am running because the past four years of the school committee has given me a deep perspective and responsibility to civic duty. I believe in transformational change and think that it takes all stakeholders top down to do this work. This includes our state representatives, our governor, our senate, our city councils, our school committee members, our students, and most importantly, our community. It's also essential to provide our teachers and administrators with continuous learning opportunities and develop their cultural responsiveness in a way that supports equity, diversity, and inclusion, which I have been very involved with. I was part of the committee who hired the director of equity, inclusion, and diversity and supported in building a structure in that office. I started the subcommittee, diversity, race, equity, inclusion, where our main goal and purpose is to make students and families part of decision making and to share their experiences. I believe in making all efforts to make sure students are supported socially and emotionally. I have made sure that by annually, all school committee members take the training on centering equity in policy, practices, and decision making. These are few of my accomplishments and goals that I want to continue to work towards in the third term as a school committee member. Okay. Lastly, I continue to believe that education starts at home in building a consistent partnership with our families, schools, and partners with short students have the support they need to unlock their school potential. Okay. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you, Sophia. Okay. I was born in Kibber, but raised right here in the Myron city of Brockton. A proud graduate of class of 97. Today I stand before you as a mother of three incredible, incredible kids, each one with a unique journey in the Brockton school system. My oldest child in the class of 22, she's like in Chicago, going in for a second year. And while my other two children continue to navigate the path of Penn City schools. For more than a decade, I've dedicated myself to nursing, a calling that has led me to a numerous position in all facets of healthcare. I learned the ins and outs of things regarding health, including being a school nurse for several years. Over this years, I've come to use my role as a mother and as an administrator to safeguard the health and well-being of every child and person under my care. And now I seek the award for a school committee position. My motivation is deeply rooted in my whole experience both as a parent and an educator. I'm committed to a joint decision-making system. Education is a shared responsibility, which is why I am a believer of web connection to support, support children. Our children's educational journey should be a joint effort between teachers, admin, and students each have a value in the line of communication and decision-making. It is imperative that we discover more effective avenues to convey information to all members of our community, particularly those who speak a different language. We need to be empowered by educators. Our teachers are the heart of our educational system. We should be providing them with resources, needed professional development, and support they need to excel in their roles. When our educator strives, our children strives. For every student is unique, and our educational approach should 
glad to welcome us today. I'm passionate about fostering inclusive environments, celebrating those backgrounds, challenges, and abilities. Safety and education are hand in hand. Our focus should be creating a safe and supportive learning environment, which is essential for students' well-being. This is what I envision for all children in Brockton. I hope that we evoke support and voices that we can make this happen. We must invest in our future, and the future is our children. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Okay, last but not least is Matthew Stanton. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you all for being here. My name is Matthew Stanton. I'm a candidate for the Ward 3 School Committee. Um, I believe the foundation of any society is positive education. Um, every student deserves the highest quality, a robust, and full thinking education. Every student deserves to receive this education with the expectation of safety, inclusivity, and a welcoming environment. Not all students learn the same. We must ensure that all students' needs are met. Communication between schools, students, and parents is of the utmost importance for successful outcomes and should be constant, clear, and positive on all ends. Every student deserves a wide range of options when it comes to extracurricular activities. Uh, there is a way to reach every student. The question is, how far are we going to reach? I'm willing to reach as far as it takes. Um, our students are our future. Over my nearly three decade career, I have worked on, in the circulation department of the Boston Globe, auditing, sales, and returns in multiple local and international publications. I have worked in education as a site coordinator for two successful after school programs. And my duties included providing safe and inclusive environments for students after school, budget work, working with transportation companies. Hiring staff, training in CPR and first aid, and most importantly, communication with parents and guardians daily. I have also worked as a practice security, initially working in security for a local night lodge in the middle of the back in the day. Um, I moved to event security, working in events including the 2014 Motion Picture Association Community Award Ceremony, 2016 Education of Haiti International Academy. All uh, and at uh, various multicultural events held throughout the Great Boston South Shore area. I currently serve on the Board of Trustees for the Brockton Wool Memorial Building, as well as the Chairperson of the Brockton Unification Committee. I have previously served as, as a citizen member of the Huntington School Roof Replacement Committee. I'm a lifelong resident of Brockton, a proud husband of Ken and Gig, uh, and have spent the last eight years guiding and advocating for. I am at a place in life where I can dedicate all my time, energy, and passion into advocating for all students and families in Ward 3 and throughout the city of Champions. My wife and I have, uh, have had a chance to, to travel uh, through Latin America and where we belong. We visit schools. Matt, yeah. you've got a couple of seconds. Okay. Education is important. Um, thank you for your consideration. I firmly believe that working together as a community, Brockton Public Schools can be a model for education for everything. Uh, I humbly ask you for your support on Tuesday, September 19th, 2023. You can contact me yourself, by the way, 513 5764. My email, or I live at 162 Blue Street. My door is always open. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> okay, so. To the next phase of uh, having you folks up here on the stage. So, thank you all for introducing yourselves. Um, so, I have a question that I'm going to ask, um, and you'll all have two minutes this time. So, please try to stay with that two minutes. <laughs> um, so, um, let me just read the first part. So, pay attention. Some of us believe that we are in an educational crisis. 
Financially, a high school does not have as much money as we had in the past. Brockton High was a jewel in the crown. Still is. Culturally, we witnessed what is happening in Florida and other parts of the country. Curriculums are being rewritten by both experts and ordinary people. Educationally, we have not revisited some of our traditional methods in teaching and curriculum building. So my question to you folks is, give us one solution that you have given what I just read to you. serious concerns of global warming in the city of Rockland. And that's that's our that's our realism right now. How we address that problem, it shows you how talented, how open minded, and how serious we are as a group, all of us, everybody here, to address that problem and to overcome that problem. Number one, um, I would I would not want to compare us to the state of Florida, to be honest with you, because I feel like they are doing some things that even for us, is beyond anything we would ever consider. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one small thing that is not related to curriculum that I think is is a really big deal, and it's something that we've talked about. And I'm sure you probably, if you have been watching any of the school committee meetings, it's something that we, as a group, have talked about internally. And it's not going to sound like a big deal, but I want to explain to you why I think it really is. A few years ago, we got rid of homework. Uh, think about homework. You know, like we take that for granted when we're in our lower grades. You went to homework, you have a teacher in front of you that is not one of your academic subject teachers. You walk in, you grab your backpack, you um, start talking about what your morning was like, what your night was like, and you have this opportunity to decompress when you walk through the door as a child. And I want you to think about some of the situations our children are coming from in the morning the transportation challenges family challenges, just socially, economically, all of those impact children so much more than we realize. So when you take that moment so, of time. Uh, Kathleen, sorry, let me just, yeah, sorry to interrupt. So you've mentioned a lot here, so in some very important facts that you put out. So what would your solution be? Bring back home room. Okay. Bring back home room. Okay. Thank you. So one solution that I was um, thinking that we should have is, I know you mentioned that the curriculum was written by ordinary people. What if we had a curriculum where we had school committee members and we had educators that actually got together to make the curriculum for the students and even their students input, what do you think about this curriculum? Because at the end of the day, the students are the ones that's in the classroom that's going to be learning the curriculum, make it engaging, you know, that it keeps their attention, you know? Um, that's my solution. Okay, thank you, Jim. Yeah. Hi, I'm gonna try to stay under the two minutes. Um, so <clears throat> just to make it clear, so I'm already still on the school committee, but I'm board two and I'm running for board five. Um, I have to say that my perspective is a little different just because I now see what it is when you're in the doors versus when you're out of it per se. Um, curriculum is a tricky thing because we pay for curriculum, but we spend a lot of money on curriculum. You guys see our budgeting. Um, one big thing is Thinks that 40% of people of color is passive. And I think that number, it was 36.2, but I like to wrap it up to 40%. And I do think uh, when it comes to hiring and to teaching, uh, not only do black and brown students benefit, but also white students too. Research shows that. So when it comes to curriculum, I do agree that students need to have that input. They need to be part of that engagement in the curriculum to be able to know what it is. You know, a lot of times in classes, it's the teacher talking to the students. It needs to be more engaging, right? More like, not lecture style, but so, like a dialogue, right? So we need to learn how to teach our students that skill, because that's a skill they're gonna have for the rest, that they're gonna need for the rest of their lives, right? So I think when we think about curriculum, we gotta think about who are the people that's teaching that curriculum, 
What professional learning are they getting? What consistent, continuous learning? What, and when we think about um, PD, we gotta think not just from the teacher level, for, but from the admin as well. Um, so when we think about curriculum, we can't just put money towards that, which we have had in the past years. We gotta think, how do we give this tool to our educators, teach them effectively, and how do we create the spaces so our students can have that input? Okay. And if that's coming to the school committee and, and speaking about it, and like using that space, I think that space is not used. Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you. Anna? Um, I think one thing that I have a conversation with my daughter is about getting students more involved and getting their voice, especially the students that are successful, and getting through the rock and school system and finding out what works for them and then what didn't work for them. So we can have a type of model to put the leaders in, administrators in, educators to figure out how we can solve the um, overall issue. And especially always making sure that our schools are safe, that our students know that they can learn and not have a safety hazard. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, do you want me to read the, the kind of put things in context? I don't know. Okay. Some of us believe we are in an educational crisis. Financially, our high school does not have as much money as we had in the past. Brockton High was a jewel in the crown. Curriculums are being rewritten by both experts and ordinary people. Educationally, we have not revisited some of our traditional methods in teaching and curriculum building. So give us a solution that you may have to address any or all of these. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, I apologize. Mm -hmm. um, education isn't a crisis. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, not like you thought. Um, it's a different ballgame there, and that ballgame is going to come here. Brockton High School is the jewel. We don't want to have them down. And we will need to work. The whole community here. We come together as a community. And it, it will come back up. And we all know. Right? Brockton was the only city in Massachusetts to have, that has a K-5 global, global studies elementary school. We need to stop meeting the students where they are, whether it be K through five, pre K through five, middle school, all the way through. We need, we need to follow their journey right along the way. No child can be left behind. I know from experience. My my rising eighth grade started at the Global Studies School, the George School, and it, it just wasn't fit for me. Um, and then COVID hit, and it was online learning, and it kind of left. So we had a lot of work to do, and it was all of us. It was a community of people that came around here. And we have to do that for every single Yes. We just have to. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Okay. So you've heard your, some of your fellow school committee candidates today. Unfortunately, all of them aren't here to address you today. But we thank you for those that have shown up today. So could we give them a round of applause? Okay, so we're done. So school committee candidates, you are free to go. You can stick around, but <laughs> thank you. Welcome, board candidates. You guys are receiving, well, most of you received my email about the procedures, right? So you know how long you have to speak. And after all of you are done, I will have a question for you. It's a lot of folks. We're going to start with an incumbent, Jeffrey Thompson. Hit the ball a little, please. Jeffrey Thompson, I'm uh, Brockton's Ward 5 City Councilor, and I'm currently running for re-election. I want to thank you, uh, Phil Sellis in the Brockton area and the OACP for hosting this candidate forum. This is an important event. It allows those of us currently in political office and those who seek office 
an opportunity to make the case of why he or she is the best person for the job. So here's my pitch. It's been an honor to represent the residents of Ward 5 over the last four years. I love this city. I grew up on the east side of Brockton. I graduated Brockton High School. And after high school, I enlisted in the United States Navy, where I proudly served my country for seven years. I then returned to Brockton to attend law school. And for the past 13 years, I have operated a law office here in Brockton, serving my community in the areas of immigration law, family law, and personal injury. Currently, I live on the Brockton seaside with my wife and our youngest daughter. Over the past four years, I have used my voice and my vote to champion the interests of the residents of Brockton. I've worked with his mayor's office and my fellow city councilors to improve Brockton's aging water infrastructure, to repay Ward 5's roads, and to fund and support the finest police and fire departments in the Commonwealth. I worked with the council to increase the senior tax exemption, to expand the senior and veteran work-off programs, and to have the city adopt the Brave Act. I worked with the council to expand the Boys and Girls Club, to use our profiles to re-turf Marciano Stadium, and to build two new turf fields behind AZF Stadium. I have assisted dozens and supported dozens of Brockton residents, business owners, and developers before the Brockton Zoning Board of Appeals, the Planning Board, the Traffic Commission, and many different city hall departments. I have established myself as a pro-economic development counselor, working with Brockton's Downtown Business Association, the Metro South Chamber of Commerce, and the Brockton Redevelopment Authority on many different pro-business initiatives, and I also work with Councilor D'Augustino to bring food trucks to Brockton. Lastly, I've worked with many Brockton residents who love this city in multiple cleanup events, removing hundreds of bags of trash from our parks, waterways, and streets. If re-elected, I will continue to be prepared, professional, available, and always work in the best interests of residents of Ward 5. I humbly ask for your vote on November 7th for Ward 5 City Council. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for your time, guys. We have so many people to get to. Mr. Griffin, you're up. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Wilbur. Before I start, I just want to Phyllis, Leona, and Jim for the great work that you've only with this event of all the work that you've done for us. Here we go here. Hi again, my name is Phil Griffin. I may be born in Cambridge, but I was made in Brockton. I came here in 1960. I grew up east side of Brockton. I went to St. Coleman's, went to East Junior High School, then Brockton High, and then Bridgewater State College. I moved up to Ward 3 in 1989, and I've been there since with my family, my two children, I'm a homeowner, and a taxpayer. The reason I get into this race is really pretty simple. I think the city right now is at a tipping point. There's a lot of things that are moving forward, you can see the development going on downtown, the uh, tremendous amount of growth we've been seeing, but we have another big project right on the horizon. The fairgrounds, looks inevitable, city is going to purchase it, and I think my background with the Rockford Redevelopment Authority, which I've served for about seven years, prior to this as chairman, will be very useful in trying to shepherd this program for the citizens of Ward 3, but also all the citizens of Rockford. I think there is tremendous opportunity to develop a very high tax base in the commercial end, where hopefully we can take some of the pressure off the residential tax base. I'm also Worked 30 years in public safety, massage with the Plymouth County Sheriff's Department, and I've uh, also served in the community school advisory board. So 
Good afternoon to everyone, and let me say a special thank you to the uh, Brompton area NAACP and Ms. Phyllis Ellis and her amazing team for creating this opportunity and for giving us this space to be able to engage and to interact with the other community uh, and the voters within our city. Uh, my name is Marlon Green, and I'm a candidate for Ward 2 City Council. I'm a husband, I'm a father of two boys, I'm a pastor right here in the city of Brockton, I'm a realtor, and I'm a research administrator. I bring to this table over 25 years of key, essential experience to serve the greater good of our community. I stand before you again as a candidate with a deep passion for our community and a strong commitment to the future of our city. The choices that we make today will impact the city that we so love next year and for generations to come. I think it is important and it is incumbent upon all of us as we make our case, as we serve in different capacities that one of our key goals and motivations should be to ensure that we're leaving our city better for the next generation than how we receive it. And that should be a guiding light and a force for how we lead and for how we serve in our city. Our city is more than just a collection of streets and buildings. It is a tapestry of lives, dreams, and aspirations woven together. And I believe that by working together, we can create a city that thrives in every aspect. And so my vision for the city, and specifically in Ward 3, includes fostering a vibrant economy throughout our city. And an economy that provides opportunities for all of us to flourish and to enjoy prosperity. As a city councilor, I will prioritize um, sustainable urban planning that ensures that we uh, maintain and we take care of green spaces within our city. Efficient transportation is critical to our development. Friends, what I will do as a city councilor is I will be a champion for accountability and engagement. Elected office is representational, and a city councilor stands to represent the needs, the concerns, and the issues of the residents. 
We stand in that same council chamber, and we stand as a voice for the collective voice of the members of our community. Please join me as we write the next great chapter of our great city at the Ward One. God bless you, and thank you today. And then he shut the door. I was like, okay. So uh, I then was at a bit of a crossroads. So what I did next was I went to the next house, and that guy put a sign up for me. And then I went to the house on the other side, and that guy put a sign up for me. And then that guy every time he went down to the driveway until the election, saw my name, that's what he was. In two years after that, when I ran for re-election, he put my sign up. So you have to you have to take you have to take what you got and you have to build on it. You have to work with it. But you can't let it get you down. And you know what? Whether or not they thought I should be speaking, oh boy, was I. So I want to tell you a bit about what we've done over the last eight years. This ward has seen three times the amount of road paving we have in ward. We have made great advances in public safety. We have expanded the size of the police department, the fire department. Our department rated ISO 1, which is the highest rating possible. When it comes to finance, the city council has set back to back records for the amount of cuts it's made over the last couple of years. We've won international awards for the budget for about four or five years in a row. Uh, we have the largest rainy day fund in the city history. The city's also working on a program uh, called Open Checkbook. What Open Checkbook will allow the residents of this city and anywhere to do is go online and watch the city. Expenses live. That money comes in, and money goes out, which is as transparent as you could ever possibly hope to have. But I want to return to infrastructure. That's my favorite. The city's worked very, very hard to change the uh, to change the game. I am honored to say that I have served with a, a bunch of really fantastic counselors. Five, seven. Counselors up there. We've made a lot of work with the infrastructure, but. The name of the game is responsibility, responsiveness, and communication. When I put my you know self out there, I put myself on out there. When people have questions or concerns, they come by and call us with all guards, 508 410 330 I uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions if you're concerned. I appreciate all your time. I'm honored to have served as your counselor, and I ask for your vote again. Thank you. my colleagues, thank you for putting together uh, this event today. You are ethical and you are doing what is right for our city. I'm going to begin my speech because often you hear 
complaints about our city. And let me tell you this, Brockton is a beautiful city filled with beautiful people and cultures. Brockton graduates college-bound students who not only contribute to the American economy, many of them return home. We should give them a hand clap. Brockton produces poets and, and young scientists who began with the EXO program, who began at Brockton High School, Cardman Spelman, New Heights Charter School, and Southeastern. Brockton has strong sports programs keeping young adults busy and strong. Yet, we have much to do. Brockton is too slow in improving neighborhoods. The quality of life is different depending upon where you live in this state. The problem with Brockton is, is that we have two cities. One for those that are well connected and political and one for us. The question for all of you in this place today, what are you going to say enough is enough? Well, you don't have to clap. I'm telling the truth. Sixty years ago today, we are not acknowledged. Dr. King spoke of a dream. Yet we, for some reason, keep still dreaming. What is going on with our activists who are not acting? We can fix in this city the lack of enforcement with respect to the traffic control. Not another person, not one other person should cross the street at Vincenti and be hit by a car. We can fix that. We can fix the, the slow repainting of these dilapidated streets by seeking every state and federal dollars. We can fix it. We can shoot the number of teachers now by applying the cannabis revenue and parking fees for a parking ticket to the parking public school teachers that are We can fix it. Y'all not hearing me? We can fix the slow pace of innovation and the modernization of Brockton public housing by restructuring the Brockton Housing Authority, placing it squarely under the direction of the mayor. We can fix it. We can fix the overflow of this unseemly lot and vacant lot by finding those that own them or taking control. We can improve the cup bill of our neighbors. We can fix it. This all must be done with courage, conviction, and voting. Do not sit at home. Make sure that you go to the ballot in September. Make sure you go to the ballot on November 7th. And make sure that you never, ever forget that I will be your voice. Because City Hall belongs to you. I'm Tony Grant, and I'm your boy. Cities, the fundamental speed limit is 25 miles per hour. 
and it makes a difference. It makes a difference for insurance arbitrators. The insurance rate is actually wrong for us. Uh, it makes a difference when people are not speeding around your neighborhoods uh, 30 miles an hour. And we, as we know, in 20 breaks that would happen, you know, the current incentives, that cars are going lost slower we can prevent things like that. And we need to bring back community policing. So with all that said today, I humbly ask, you know, for your support for City Council of Um But before I let you guys know, like I said, I own a transportation company that travels, you know, across the country. There's 59 cities in Massachusetts. I've been to 50, and I tell you, out of all those 50, I could put Bronx in, talk, way better than the other cities. So I don't know how that article came about, that Bronx is one of the other cities. But we are far from the other cities. I can tell you that. <laughs> Not to take too much time, if you want to learn more about me, my website is updated regularly. It's both microwaves.com. And one of the things, I do have an event coming on September 6th at the Cape Cod Cafe between 5.30 and 8 o'clock. Thank you, bro. Come here today. No vision, no direction. Uh, 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the members of the Brock Daniel Branch and the Woods B and Phelps Citizens of our vibrant community. It is an honor to stand before you today as a candidate uh, for the Brockton Ward to be City Council. Uh, my name is Jerson Montero, and I'm here to share my vision for stronger, more inclusive, and equitable Brockton. Uh, for the past 14 years, I have served as an educator in the Brockton Public School District. I stand here as an advocate for change and as a committed uh, community member to the Deep Roots in Ward 3. I am privileged to have been raised uh, in this very ward, attended uh, South Middle School and graduated from Brockton High uh, in the class of 1998. Today, I come before you as someone who understands the issues that affect our neighborhood because it affects me too. Our campaign is driven by principles that mirror our community's values and aspirations, our policies, are committed to justice, equity, and empowerment. First and foremost, we champion the cause of open and democratic government. Uh, we firmly believe that every decision made by the city of Brockton should be scrutinized through the lens of equity. We pledge to, uh, to value the input of mar marginalized residents and those who directly impact their voices, uh, those, who, those most directly impacted. Their voices are invaluable and their perspectives must shape our policies. Housing and justice is not just a concept but a fundamental human right. Our vision encompasses a city where high quality, safe, accessible, and affordable housing is available. We recognize the significance of a stable home and will work tirelessly to make this a reality to everyone in our community. In pursuing a safer and more secure community, we have advocated for community centered and community controlled policing. Our police force uh, must operate within our community standards, prioritizing every individual's dignity for that in life. Furthermore, we are committed to safeguarding civil and human rights for all. Our policies uh, will foster an environment where race, ethnicity, gender, socioeconomic uh, status, and more are not barriers for celebrated aspects of our diverse community. I choose to stand to a city with sustainable economic development and workers' rights. We pledge to create family supporting jobs, equal opportunity, and good distribution of wealth. We recognize that a thriving economy requires respect for workers' rights. Uh, preserving our environment is not just an option, it is our responsibility. We believe in wise land use and clean environment. We will work diligently to ensure that our policies reflect uh, this commitment. Also, transportation is a cornerstone, cornerstone of urban uh, life. And we are dedicated to fostering safe, efficient, and accessible uh, alternatives to motor vehicle use. Investing in, in these alternatives to create a greener, more sustainable Brockton. And at least, uh, last but not least, education is at the heart of our community's future. Our collaboration with the Brockton, uh, Brockton School Committee and Southeastern School Committees will prioritize education and well-being of our young people, ensuring that they have access to the tools they need to thrive. Ladies and gentlemen, Together, uh, we can transform our community. With my 14 years of experience in education, my commitment to the uh, equity and passionate drive for positive change, I am prepared to stand as your advocate for on the Brooklyn Ward 3 City Council. I am Jerson Montero, and I am ready to join hands with each one of you to make our vision a reality. Thank you. Thank you. and they can't. They're trying to navigate the system in City Hall and they cannot. 
because of language or whatever other barriers they have. I've been making these calls. I'm a social worker here in the city of Boston. I have worked with agencies such as DCF, DHCD on health issues, and now DTA on food stamps and cash assistance. I have seen what our people need, and I have been the voice. I know something, but as you guys know, I go off script a lot, and that's what I'm doing right now. I am speaking to you guys from the heart, and I'm asking you guys from the heart, if you guys want me to continue to be your voice, if you will allow me to continue to bring the issues that we have as a community, please vote for me. Whether I am a council or not, I will continue to be a social worker, I will continue to be a community advocate, and I will continue to be the voice of Brockton, and I'll continue to be Brockton because that's what I am. Thank you. Massachusetts. 
Same issues, same problems, but here's the difference. Those issues become problems by the way we handle them. And I've found often that some of our issues have lingered as problems for decades because of the ways we're handling them. Not bad and not good, just the way we do it. It's the ecosystem that we create. I uh, learned in my trials and my experience as a filmmaker working with top, top of notch filmmakers and people around the men, places I've been to and the experience I've seen, is that there's one thing that the ecosystem you create is what you get. And we have an amazing place in Brockton, and that's why we're all here, right? I think we can agree that all of us are in Brockton because we love Brockton, we want it to be the best community that it is. And we know it is. But you know what? We have to be able to look in the mirror. If we really want Brockton to be better, where better begins, we have to look how we're doing it. There's a lot of little things that aren't happening in Brock that we do. And that's why I've always stopped talking about the, rock, the broken windows theory. Even our mayor mentioned it in his state of the city address earlier this year. Broken windows. It's how you do things. It's not about poverty. It's not about being wealthy. It's about, it's about class. It's about just having manners. How we do things in our community. Even while I was sitting here in, our, in this auditorium, you look around, there's pencil marks all across the walls. I'm saying it's basic little things like this need to stop happening. You know, it's the small little things that have the bigger things, how the bigger things are happening. And if you elect me as your own seventh city councilor, I can do one thing. I will keep the promise. I will promise you that I will keep the conversations alive on top of the table instead of being under the table and behind closed doors. <laughs> There's more than one way to get, get, get to a solution, but I'm a solution-based person. So we come up with an issue that's a problem. We need to find a solution, and we need to start using solution-based thinking, common sense, to solve the issues that have become problems in Brockton. When we go around, in, around Massachusetts, they're not problems, they're just issues, because the way those communities are handled. So I ask you to remember to uh, vote for me for Ward 7 City Council. Thank you so much. <laughs>
is our responsibility? Well, this, I think the number one responsibility for a city councilor is to listen to their constituents, to educate themselves on the issues that are before the city. All right, uh, this is a part, this is, uh, advertising a part-time job, that's not true. This is a full-time job. You need to put in the work. You need to learn about infrastructure, about public safety, about uh, government operations, about uh, the, this, uh, the school committee and the, and the issues that they deal with. You're here as a liaison between the residents and City Hall. And so, number one is you gotta be available. You gotta listen, you gotta learn, and you gotta put in the time and effort. Yes, relationships are key. You gotta make relationships with everybody. Uh, your friends one day, uh, you know, you, you, you work together on one issue, you pull up an issue one day, next day you may be opposing, but you cannot let, uh, you know, uh, division uh, affect you personally. This is an important job. And you need to really understand what the issues are and, and spend a lot of time learning. The learning curve on this job is huge. You need somebody who's going to put in work every single day to learn those issues. Thank, Thank you. Who I am, how can you get in touch with me, 
And we just have regular wood meetings. Okay, and I do mean regular wood meetings that everyone says they're going to have. We will have that on the day. Because in fact, as long as you're informed, I will be your, your mouthpiece. But I need to hear what's going on. You need to tell me. I don't want it to come from me making a decision for you. We're going to make it together. So the relationship that I want to build, I already, I've already been doing this a long time trying to get in. And the relationship that I want to build is with you. The citizens of the Brock and the citizens of the Ward Creek. So the relationships that are down at the state level and everything else, that will all come. Okay? And some of it's already there. But I'm not an inside. I want to work with you. Thank you. Thank you. It's about showing leadership, not just about um, being part of a group of 11, but showing individual leadership while moving that group forward in the direction of better than this community. That's what I'm going to see happen. Thank you.
war. And I'll tell you this, uh, representation is impossible without engagement. So the city council have the responsibility to engage his or her ward, perhaps in the form of a ward um, uh, uh, meeting, where information is provided and the council hear the thoughts and the ideas and the suggestions of the other voters within that particular ward. It was referenced earlier about this uh, significant $55 million purchase that is pending for the uh, fairgrounds here in the other city. This is perhaps um, a key opportunity for councilors to rally their wards together and to hear the concerns and the ideas of everyone in their ward and take that information and reflect that as they sit and deliberate in the uh, council chamber. Thank you. Thank you. But we can sit together 
and try to get the best out of the city of Prague. First, to finish, to finish, I want to thank you in advance for the great support that you will be giving me for this coming election in September 19 and eventually November 7. And I'm humbly asking you to give me one of the four votes as City Council of Arch in order to be able to serve you moving forward. And I'm learning, I'm ready for the learning process. And I'm so excited to have participated in the City of Brooklyn for the better. Thank you for giving me uh, the opportunity to introduce myself to you today. Thank you. Thank you so much.
side. Hello, everybody. I want to start by thanking the NAACP and all the volunteers today. So thank you, Phyllis. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Leona. Thank you to everybody outside who came to in. We're so happy to join. Uh, my name is Jamal Bradley, and I'm running for Bronson City Council at large. And the reason why I'm running is because I believe Rockton deserves the best rooms, the best schools, the best crosswalks, <laughs> safe streets, and a fair and equitable property tax system that makes housing more affordable, not just in the city of Rockton, but that can be a template example for the rest of the state of Massachusetts. My background is that for the past 20 years, I've worked as an accountant for the largest financial institutions in the United States and the United Kingdom. Before moving to Brockton, I lived in London, England for 10 years where I worked in financial services, and I lived with my wonderful wife, Angela Bradley, who I've been with for over 23 years. To me in Brockton, I feel that we have this year is a very time sensitive opportunity for us because we have something called the US Infrastructure and Investment Jobs Act, which brought $9.5 billion to the state of Massachusetts. And it's the responsibility of the city of Brockton to apply for these monies to Mass Department of Transportation to secure the funding to execute a road pavement management plan. Now, this is time sensitive because this money has only been available since 2022 for a period of five years. And in the past, or since this, these monies have been available, the Brockton City Council has never passed a resolution to have the mayor or the CFO or the head of the DPW come before them to describe what monies have we applied for. What monies can we secure? What projects will they be allocated to? And what is the timeline for completion? Therefore, I'm concerned that Rockton is leaving money on the table, money that we rightfully deserve. And so as a city council at large, I'm going to fight and advocate that we get these money that we so desperately need. And for that reason, I'm asking for your vote on Tuesday, September 19th, and Tuesday, November 7th, to vote for Jamal Brathwaite for Brockton City Council of Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, a little bit about me, for those of you who don't know me, born and raised in Brockton. Uh, my wonderful mom and dad are in the audience today. They born and raised in Brockton. Give them a round of applause. Thank you for coming. I've lived here my whole life. Uh, I'm dedicated to the city. I've raised my three beautiful daughters here. We've all attended Brockton Public Schools. In fact, they went to the same schools that I went to. So, um, I love Brockton. Brockton is a city of champions. Brockton is not ugly by any means. The diversity in the city is beautiful. This is one of the greatest places in the world, in my opinion. But a little bit about me. I've been in municipal government for 30 years, public safety for 30 years. Uh, I understand municipal budgets. I understand how uh, municipalities operate. I've been your emergency manager for the past nine years. Uh, we've, we've had challenges. Uh, we've helped the city, I've helped the city get through many challenges. 
challenges. Back in 2014, when I first started as the emergency manager, we had seven feet of snow. Everybody remember that? We had to have the National Guard come in and help us remove snow. Shortly after that, shortly after that, we had no water in the city. So we've had a lot of different events over time. One of the biggest ones was COVID. And I sit on the COVID task force. COVID task force still exists today. Uh, I also sit on the traffic commission. I understand when the residents come to the traffic commission, I understand what their concerns are and how, how do we address it. I sit on the pedestrian task force. Um, I, you know, one of the, one of the, one of the proudest moments of my life was the day that my plan for implementing vaccines to the first responders and seniors in Brockton was implemented. It was in January, two years ago, when we got our first batch of uh, vaccines and we were able to give vaccines to our first responders. And that was my plan, and that was one of my proudest days after the my children came along, of course. So, we have a lot of challenges. I'm running on public safety. A lot of people talk about public safety. Um, I live and breathe public safety every day. I know all about it. I know what it's about. I know how to make it better. We have a world-class fire department. We have a world-class fire department and police department in the city. We need to make sure that they still get the resources they need to do the job that they're doing. They're wonderful. Uh, I want to advocate for our seniors and our veterans. Make sure they get the, we expand on their services and they continue to get what they need. Please vote for me. I'm only asking for your, your support on uh, September 19th. I'm number three in the ballot. Both Steve for Council Lives. Thank you. So this has a multiplier impact. It starts with improving our first impression, our road waste. The engineer of public safety, people are not going to come to Brockton if they don't feel safe. I know people who have lived in the city their whole life and they will not come downtown because they don't feel safe. We need to invest in, in downtown we need to make sure that the residents feel safe when they're out there. Uh, you know, we have a great downtown. We have a lot of building going on. I'd like to see some community policing downtown beats up and down Main Street. Make the people feel safe and they will come. Thank you. You know, people say beach, flying, having more activities here. First of all, we need to help the business owners that's here. We are we are struggling, but we're still striving. But if you bring, if you think about it, look at our escape home. 
They trying to do what I go again. I agree with everybody on the $55 million that they trying to buy up at the fairgrounds. You first need to save what we got before you buy. Try to buy something else. That's exactly what you need to do. Because if you're not saving what you got, what you going to have to in the city to come to? It doesn't matter where the streets are fixed or where they are broken or whether they are repaired or they smoothness. You know, ice. If you does not fix what you got here, we would never have, you know, businesses or outside people coming here. Again, I can count them on one hand who support my business. So I am a proud business owner, but I'm going to continue to strive on what I do best. But we do need to bring exact activity for the kids, safe on, you know, safe, even better schools. If you build a beautiful school, you would attract more people. But again, I got to stick to the businesses. Bring new, bring new businesses. First, you got to fix the ones that's here. And I think it will attract more people. Thank you. I know Rob. I've been living here for almost 10 years. I believe Brockton is one of the most diverse cities in, the, uh, uh, in Massachusetts. But what we want, we want to put ourselves together. And I am willing to put myself in, like, to, in, in order to be able to promote this uh, Brockton that we all need moving forward. What I would like to do is uh, put myself, like after the resort, I can eventually work together with other counselors to bring the best for product. Because as a city council, that's the legislative branch of uh, product. We can go out there and do anything by ourselves, like by myself, I can do anything by myself. But the thing is, if I put myself together with other people, with a mindset of unity, we can actually complete and uh, accomplish a very great stuff for Brockton. I believe that we can do it, and I believe you, clients, you are very Take it. You, yes, you are to, okay, you are going to put, make sure. All right. All right, okay, yeah. All right. <laughs> so uh, I would like I'm inviting you uh, again to take a chance on change. The election is for you. Go out and vote for someone who's going to get stuff done for you. Who going to put himself at the table to work together with the counselors so we can work the world. Thank you. I just hope that today I honor their legacy well. 
My name is John Charles Williams. I've been a Bronxonian for over 40 years. I was raised here on the east side. Everybody knows. East side. But today I come before you and humbly ask you to vote for mayor to represent the entire city. I'm not a career politician. I'm not a career candidate. I ran for city council at large in Long Island. And after that, I started my company to be a mentor in this city to our young people. Because I believe it is our young people that are underserved in this city and our seniors. And any society that thrives promotes their young people, promotes their seniors. We live in a city that's full of corruption. We know this. Anyone that's been here for any amount of time, you know there's a good old boy network here. You know that there's a network of men who don't give you the information that you need. And if you stand up against them, they'll break down the livelihood. We've had good men, good women, fight for us in this community. Tina Cardoso, who had the nerve to talk about donors of the mayor getting perks after the election. We've had people stand up. I wanna, I wanna say I have to recognize some brothers and sisters, Doree Smith, Wayne, <coughs> Wayne McAllister, my brother Ed Downey. And I mention these people because these are some of the men and women. I also want to mention some of them that are still living. Ozzy Jordan, um, Gwen Knowles, Jackie Jones, Miss Rachel Cherry. And I mention these people because they have surrounded me since I've been a community servant here in Brockton. And I've served as our community for over 15 years. They've surrounded me. They've imparted their wisdom, their experience. They've grown me into the man that you see before you that is ready to lead our city. I wasn't ready before. I can admit that. I can admit I had to work on myself to become a proper leader. But Brockton, if you will allow me to, I am ready to lead us into the future. We have to break down the corruption that weighs us down. We're trying to put the money in pockets of people who are rich already. All they do is collect our money and they're going to leave. The Carnies, the building, the DraftKings casino down in Raymond, they want to take 55 more million down there with them. It's up to us to say no. Our mayor said before he's not in the water business. We're not in the real estate business either. <laughs> my children, this is who I do it for. My children, I brought them up. We brought them to Brockton Public Schools. My daughter back there. <laughs> my wife was raising these children with me. We raised our children in Brockton Public Schools and we've been unable to send them to Brockton High School because our high school is unsafe. Our schools are unsafe. We have a 30% retention rate in the ninth grade. That means our kids are being prepared in middle school. Anyone that's been in our middle school, and I want to shout out Cynthia Rivas Mendez, that's the only school committee member that reached out to me to go into the schools and find out exactly what's going on. We have city officials who have no idea what's going on in our schools, including our school superintendent, who wasted $73 million. We have a mayor who doesn't go into our schools. We have a mayor who knows nothing about the street problem. All we say is, let's hire more police. Well, how about let's go out and talk to our young people? Let's, have, let's go out and speak to the homeless. Speak to those that are unhoused and figure out what their issues are. We can't just move the shelter and say get out of here because they're not going anywhere. 
And we're going to have an even bigger problem. So, I humbly ask for your vote for Mayor Broughton on September 19. My name is John Williams. We have to get rid of the nepotism. We have to get rid of the good old boys network. And I know we will not. I know Broughton and the minority leader in New England as far as population. We have the highest black population in New England. I know we're not going to elect people that uses racist evidence. I know we're not going to elect people. Thank you. We're ready to have fun. Let's go. Mr. Ripley, you're out. Now, as we get to the top, please. Yes. <laughs> 
threat that awaits their kids on a bottom bad bus. They have maintained their Berlin Wall of silence and have refused to answer my question. We must protect our kids. We must protect our kids. I strongly urge the administration to put politics aside and immediately publicly address this threat before school starts and an unnecessary and totally avoidable tragedy occurs. I hope that some of you in this audience agree with me. Now I'm going to go into, under my administration, under my administration, I will take public safety seriously and pledge to act responsibly to give the people of Brockton the information they need. Under my administration, I pledge to do my best to fight for the people of Brockton. Under my administration, I will make it clear to all the common heads that it's a new day in Brockton and we will hold them accountable and follow through. The days of dropped phone calls and promises and dropped and false promises to Brockton residents is, will be over. In short, I want you, the people, to hold me and my administration accountable. Well, it is, well, it is natural that I will make mistakes. I, will, I, will, I pledge to be a group learner and keep them in minimum. Finally, in conclusion, I understand and acknowledge that I am not a political novice. I'm a normal everyday person who, during my retirement, I was dragged into this race. But maybe that is exactly what the people of Rock to me. Someone who thinks outside the box and, and is beholden to no one. And is beholden to no one. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today. I'd be happy to answer all your questions. I know I can't do it right now. Give you any evidence you need. Sit and answer all your questions and satisfy any of your concerns. Uh, I also want to say thank you and the government of ACP and all the volunteers for having us here today. Again, I That's why I became the smartest man in Brock. I have street smarts and school smarts. That's why I'm smart. 
Uh, went to uh, UMass Amherst undergrad. Yeah, I was certified. I have a, a bachelor's degree from UMass Amherst. I have a master of science degree from UMass uh, UMass Boston. I can certify that. Anyone who's talking my diploma, I'll email them. And I graduated with honors in my school and in my uh, university. I can prove that without any verification. But the newspaper says otherwise. So uh, I was a buyer from a company which owned 44 fighting stores. Uh, top producer for the fourth seventh department. Uh, I superseded all of the departments as far as the sales revenue for 44 stores that I managed. But Macy's bought out my lanes at the time, so I took my service package, provided them all the real estate investment. I took $250,000 and uh, leveraged it into $5 million in a span of two years. Um, I became a math teacher at the Burke High School in Dorchester. I taught math at, at risk U. Uh, that's what my passion is, helping people. In profit part of situations. Uh, a real estate broker in Massachusetts for over 25 years. I'm a real estate instructor. I teach. I license people in Massachusetts to get their real estate license. And I'm a real estate coach. I teach young kids how to invest in real estate, build properties, develop and so on and so forth. Because that's what I eat, drink, and sleep. Um, I'm also the owner of Birch Cafe. That's my hobby. I, I, that's not my livelihood. My livelihood is real estate. And teaching and coaching. I make more money teaching and coaching and grow real estate than I do. George Seconds. Um, today, uh, the city is a disaster. Um, we have an opioid problem, homelessness problem, drug trafficking problem, poverty problem. My solution is basically um, grab the bull by its horn to stop the uh, city problems. I'm going to basically be a bully mayor, and the solution is to vote for me. I guarantee you, I need six months. Just give me six months, I will turn the city around and put it on the right path in six months. All right? We're going to stop the fairgrounds purchase. We're going to stop the query. We're going to cut the contract. We Police station project and stop it. We're going to put that money where it belongs. Important parties and middle class and marginalized people. I'm bringing out property taxes. I'm going to basically bring a Brockton City Hospital, because I can do that, to Brockton. A public hospital, which is going to Offset the levy and bring down your property taxes. That's how we're going to bring down your property taxes. We're going to bring a hospital like Boston Medical Center here, which is going to cover half the levy of the city. Guaranteed. We're going to create over 4,000 jobs with this, with this uh, hospital. I'm going to stop talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm oh, oh, sorry. Both of them to my previous. We're going to make Brockton great again. When you vote for me, and make me a man. I'm sorry for taking that one time. God bless you guys. And God bless America, God bless Brockton. We're going to move the city forward. Thank you. Last but not least, Fred Fontaine. Fred, four minutes. First of all, let me say thank you. Thank you and let me say the Boston area for the NWPC city for hosting the night. When I'm looking tonight, this room was supposed to be fair of folks here if they are concerned. But anyway, who's here tonight? I think they are the best. They are concerned for me. My name is Fred Fontaine. And I want to thank also my staff members who are here with me tonight to support me. And all of you folks who came out tonight, they got us far with me or with or not or not. My campaign is about changing the perception of black people. A perception on a positive way. Changing the perception of our school system, changing the perception of how we will be viewed by others on the other side. I have been involved in this community for the past 30 years. And this is the worst I have ever seen for what? We've been named the obvious scene for the whole Massachusetts. I'm mad. You shouldn't be mad. 
Because Brooklyn is a beautiful city. We just have to help Brooklyn work together and change the perception. While every other city is investing in our kids, in our school, we are defunding our school system. This is what? 200 teachers were laid off not too long ago. The best of our teachers is out there now. Our school is not having anything to say about it. We support the concern as parents, as family, who's living here in Brooklyn. The community needs someone who will speak up and advocate for them. Not ignoring them. What makes me qualify for the job? Because I have been a small business for the past 30 years and more. I have connected and vested and seen the city shrine and bring people together. My platform doctor is a diverse cause. We focus the city, the city budget toward education. We are in teachers, opening school again, working with the union and the teachers to find a way to improve the system while creating more academic and extracurricular opportunities. This is more important today because we know why of the case that I have to mention and you know, all the barriers already conspiring against our case. I want to make what's beautiful, creating more green space for family to increase the current value. I will make sure that we revise, reinforce our ordinance, resources for those with mental health issues and contribute to the city. I hope to improve public safety. Integrating community leaders as concern and collaboration with police and other safety departments to improve and maintain relations while jointly addressing the issue affecting the city. Why? Because we need a change. And if you are going to address these problems, the current administration has shown through their spending, policies, commitment, and absence that they are not dedicated to improve the city. So, in September 19 and November 7, vote for the change that you deserve. We will do it to them. Guess what? We do have a beautiful program in Boston High School, the STEAM program. The STEAM program, this is getting our kids ready for the 21st century for robotics, code, aviation, and other stuff that all our kids who deserve to be from We should explain this and for your kids, get them ready because 21st century is going to be soon. When we got, this is supposed to be the replacement. For Brock. Remember. Let's close it out. Yes. <laughs> if you want a voice, I am your voice. We will work together with the city councilors, the police station, the fire station, everyone in the city to make Brock a better place. If you want to risk me out, you will risk me out to do more of my door, you will call you, fight for Brock or call me at. 774-259-0096. Thank you, have a good night.
Come on. Okay. So, to fix that economic problem, you have to create affordability. Once you make the city affordable, you fix that economic problem. Basically, you got to bring industries into the city. Industry, industry, industry. You've got to create real jobs, not small, big jobs. You have to bring in industries like hospitals, public hospitals. It's all about the levy. The levy is at $550 million, which means that's our bills that we have to pay every year. You take 55, $550, million, uh, $550 million divided by approximately 28,000 homes. That's how much each house is going to pay property tax. That's how it works. So all of us pay for that $550 million levy. So the, the, the solution is, let's find industries to pay for that levy, at least half of it, so that your cost of living goes down. That's how you solve economic problems in Brown. Create jobs, bring in industries, lower the liability of the levy at the cost of the people. Fair rounds are being, it's being sold for $5 million. Who's paying for it? You. $55 million divided by $20,000 homes, do the math, everyone's taxes are going up next year, $2,000 on top of your paying out. Mark that works. We purchased the fairgrounds today. Your property taxes are all going to go up $2,000. Mark that works. Read my lips. Everyone's taxes in Brockton is going to be $2,000 more. That's simple mathematics. Why can't you bring in a hospital and have the hospital revenue pay for the fairgrounds? We cannot have an open checkbook and go shop in the city. Buy one million dollars. Buy a water company that we pay eight, eight million dollar loss every year. Eight million dollars divided by twenty thousand dollar home. Twenty thousand homes. That's how much we're paying for water that we don't even use in the city. Wake up. Nope. That's how you solve the economic problem in the city. Thank you. Two minutes, please. This is going to be another topic to me because I'm not a typical politician. I'm not, I don't know anything about this stuff. Just as an elector, I, but I can. But I, will, but I will say, from what I've seen in Brockton, uh, I was also born here, went to the high school here. As in, if I was a developer or someone bringing money into this city, I'm sorry, but I would tell you, I would not bring my money into this city. The city is. The high, the high crime has got to be addressed. The cleanliness of the city. Downtown is a downtown. Let me think of a nice word to use. Downtown is a mess. If any, anybody coming into Brockton, if they start out in downtown, they're going to turn right around and get the hell out. It, it, it is a mess. I'm not a typical politician. I'm giving you, I'm giving you my, my honest response to what I see in the city. But no developer is going to come into this city unless we address the issue of crime, the issue of dirty streets, there's trash, there's bottles, there's, there's overgrown bushes. And the city is a mess, and that is the truth. We got to address that before anyone is going to come to Brockton. And also, I want to say, two weeks ago, I needed a bathrobe and a pair of men's dress shoes. I think it says that a lot about Brockton that there's no place in this city for a man to go buy a bathrobe or a pair of shoes or a dress shirt without leaving the city and going somewhere else. That's true. This is a city of 100,000 people. That should not be that way. I'm sorry, I want to live. Thank you. First thing we have to re-engage our citizens. We have to infuse our small businesses, our businesses that already exist here, in order to bring new businesses in. You said a lot, but you did say something that was correct. We have to clean up the eyesore of the city that we have. We don't put enough into bringing the community back to being a community. We can talk all the numbers we we know we shouldn't spend that $55 million. 
We know we shouldn't have invested those millions into those buses. We know. Excuse me. Let it finish, please. So, with with knowing that, we have to engage the people that are already here. Stop spending money on things that don't affect Brocktonians. We can't break. Who's gonna come downtown? Like I said, who's gonna come downtown? Apple, McDonald's. Who's gonna come downtown and put a business there? A big business. Who? Until we start getting out there, talking to our homeless, talking to the young people out there in the streets that have nothing to do. I grew up here with three movie theaters. Chuck E. Cheese, we had a lot of things for young people to do. If we don't get our young people out of the streets, and we don't address the gang problem that is happening in our schools, it'll be impossible to bring new businesses here. It'll be impossible to bring new residents here. When you come to a city, the first thing you look at if you have kids is the school system. The first thing you look at if you don't have kids is public safety. And when you look at our public safety record, we know we can't consequence our way out of our public safety issue. So we can't send more people to jail. We can't hire more police officers. What we have to do is get out and engage our community. Not only the kids, we got parents. Okay. We got to engage parents. We got to make sure this happens. We got to make sure our police. As the mayor, you're in charge of the police department, you're in charge of the schools. So we make sure our schools are good. Does it good or bad? I'm saying I'm going to be the principal, I'm going to be the superintendent, I'm going to do all that. No, stick to your job and do it well. And oversee it. Oversee Thank your you, school that yeah. needs to be in our school, engage in our kids. Oversee our city council who needs to be engaged with our citizens. Notice the city council members at large that were here today. Engage it. Notice the candidates for mayor that are here today. The mayor couldn't even come to this. To the Thank show. you, John. We are And in a city where we have the largest minority population in New England, if our mayor can't come and support the NAACP, we need to get him out of here. Yes, Russia. I know what the city needs. 
I will finish the job that Bill Gunther has started. We will go together. Tell me we should go. And last, the NWC is doing a beautiful job. We should support what them said they have to be strong enough to support the other force around the city. We need you, but you, you need us as well. So that's why we will support you as soon as you come to men to make the city a better place to live. Thank you very much. Have a good man. Hey, good evening. Hi, folks. Um, I like this. I am deeply, deeply sorry for being late. And obviously, uh, like Madam President said, that I did email and uh, let them know that uh, my job, which I just put 16 hours, wouldn't let me because we're going to sleep. Before I even speak, let me just say this. Janet, it is so nice to see you. Come on, put your hands together for her. And uh, some of you may not know who she is, but I can remember to give me, give me a minute to talk about her. I think it's important to acknowledge that greatness. I can remember to give me when I first moved to this country for me. As a new college, not knowing anyone other than my family, she was one of the first people that I come across. And since that day, she has been nothing but amazing, kind, great to every single one of us that come across. For that reason, I would like all of you to put your hands together for her. Because she is um, In the spirit of politics, I guess sometimes, we forget to acknowledge the people that are behind this scene doing amazing work. And I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the greatness of the NWCP for not only doing this, but I've been doing an amazing job in a place where it's very tough to motivate people. And I commend you, Madam President, and I commend your staff, and hopefully one day, somehow, somewhere, people will see it. I'm not going to go too long, let me just put it through like this. I am the longest year on the ballot. You cannot forget this. I went before I won, and I went for that I was. But one thing for sure, I never give up. Because if you know, it's not part of our vocabulary. I am running in this election because of you, because of our children, because of our seniors, because of our people who have invested millions of dollars in this community. I am putting my time, my energy, my money into that race. And as always, I do have a track record. For the sake of being late, I'm going to leave it like this. Hopefully, the preliminary election in September 19th will go, and hopefully, in, before the election in November, you will have the opportunity to deal with. But I'm going to leave you with this. The city of Rockton is an amazing place. It's a wonderful place. In order for us to make the improvement, the solidarity, and what we need in terms of cleanliness, each of us do have a solid obligation, not just to speak, not just to yell, not just to curse, but to come together as one people and do it. It's the spirit of a little boy out there and a little girl out there waiting for someone that can actually help them read a book and let them know that they themselves can be part of this community. You did it for me, and I hope you will continue to do it for all of us. I am not a politician. I'm a servant. My first job in this country, I work as a boss for Christmas, where I've learned to clean tables, to wait on people, and to do my best. And as of right now, that's what I've been doing. I've been doing all kinds of jobs, but I never give up. I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to me, but most importantly, I want to thank you for taking the time to come here. Tonight is at the end of the race, it's the beginning. Let's get together 
to the white defense of Rakhon. If you believe that I am qualified, I am able, I have the ability to represent you, I ask you for all of your hope. If you believe that my voice will sound for you and my way of thinking will help you, I am asking you for your hope. But if you are looking for somebody who is unable to speak, unable to stand up, unable to fight, I am not your guy. As always, I will fight for you with every breath that I got. Those of you who know me, you know that well. I stand up for what we believe. I stand up for what is good. I am not in politics. I am in this to win it, but I cannot win it without you. I love you all. God bless you. Let's do this. Wow, all the candidates. This is our conclusion. I hope you guys got a beautiful and happy Thanksgiving. I know I sure did. Please go out and vote. After the uh, primary, we will be hosting debates for all the candidates. So look forward to my email regarding that. But please go out and vote on September 19th for a candidate to occur today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hamilton. Thank you, Mr. Ripley. We appreciate you. Bye.